Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful Saturday morning. Today I have three beautiful modern farmhouse DIYs for you. So let's go ahead and get right into them. All right, y'all, we are starting with our 18 inch wood rounds, gloves, and our microfiber cloth. I am also using Golden Pecan by Rustoleum. And uh, yeah, so we are gonna be staining our piece of wood and I am going with the grain of the wood here. I did pre-sand this with 80 grit sandpaper and then 220 to smooth it on out. Make sure you get the sizes of your sides of your wood round because they come super rough and it'll make uh, putting stain on it really hard. So make sure you also sand the sides of this. Now I prefer microfiber cloth because it holds a lot of the stain um, and moves it around a lot more. And I've tried everything y'all. So this is my, my preferred method. So here it is after drying for 24 hours. And right here I'm showing you, you see the lines in there? That's because these are glued panels of wood. So use those lines to your advantage. Now I'm taking a uh, Scotch 233 plus automotive tape. Now this is more expensive. You could get it at your local automotive shops or on Amazon. It's in my um, Amazon store link. It is just so much more adhesive and I never ever get bleeds with this stuff. So it's definitely, it's my thing. I don't know. So um, go ahead and make sure you tape off the sides. There are lines on the sides too. So make sure to follow them. Then we're gonna take Rich Black by Folk Art and our sponge roller. Y'all, the sponge roller is the way to go. If you use a brush on this, you are gonna be leaving brush strokes, which create ridges in your paint. So if you were to put your stencil on top of that paint, then your paint is then going to seep underneath your stencil vinyl and into all those little baby ridges. So that is why I prefer using the sponge roller because it's nice and it's even coats. Um, so yeah, so make sure to get the sides of this. You do not need to press hard on your sponge. There is no, no reason you should have to press hard. Then I'm gonna take the blow dryer on cool setting and I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the process. We're gonna go ahead and dry this. Do not use heat on chalk paint because it does have a tendency to crack if you do that right away. And then our favorite part, taking off the tape and seeing that crisp, beautiful line. All right, so you guys, let's go on to the next step. Now I am attaching my uh, stencil. This is with Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl, also in my Amazon store link. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get my finger and just press around all of the letters, making sure everything's adhered and it's down, no bubbles, um, nice, and smooth. Then I am taking a uh, linen white by Rustoleum, taking the same sponge roller, and I am going to just put light, even coats of paint. You do not, and I'm going to repeat, do not have to press down on your sponge roller. If you have enough product on your sponge roller, you should just be able to do like the lightest application, the lightest roll without putting any pressure on it. So then after this, I'm doing blow dryer again on cool setting to speed up my process because we do have to do two coats of this white paint. And again, you can see how I kind of like keep going over my spots and that's just so I could create a smooth, even layer of paint. And you guys ready? Woo, you guys, look at those lines. Look at those lines. Not one gosh darn bleed. Not one y'all. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, so then taking our uh, our Cricut uh, weeding tool, we're gonna go ahead and weed those right out. Now y'all, I'm gonna give you a good tip. I had so many of you ask, how do you clear this without it smearing all over the place? So I usually have never had that problem. I usually wait 24 hours and then I put my helmsman on and I never had problems with it smearing. But I suggested to y'all use Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Spray Paint Put a light even coat over it one time, let it dry, and then put your helmsman on there. So that's what I decided to do, and it's a game changer. So now taking our helmsman, water-based, saying that loud because everybody 
it's water-based. If you do not want that beautiful white turning yellow, then make sure to get water-based. So this is a kind of like a water, watery texture. So you just need really light amount on your brush. You're gonna coat that over one time for me. I have an overhang on my porch, so I'm only gonna put one coat of this on the front, the sides, and the back. And uh, when you do the sides, make sure you get the sides because if you have any of this product come over your sides it's going to dry in little cloudy bubbles which we do not want so just taking my chip brush i'm just kind of going through and blending that product into the side and then we are also going to be doing a coat of this on the back as well and all i did was dry this on cool setting with my blow dryer to also speed up the process here so taking a clean clean pad. I put this face down. We go, go ahead and do our back. Now Helmsman is what you want to use for outdoor signs because it um, withstands humidity, all the different weather changes, snow, heat, all of that. So that's why I choose to use Helmsman Spar Urethane. So now taking our wood rounds, I am going three panels down and three inches in on each side with my D hooks. Now these D hooks have not been available for a long time on Amazon. They are back in stock, so I added them to my Amazon store link. They are my absolute favorites. So now taking our screw gun and our screw that comes with these, we are gonna go ahead and screw these into place and I do put them on on an angle. So now taking this wire jute, this is actually from Dollar Tree y'all and I love it. I also use like burlap ribbon and we'll just hot glue it and stuff. So there's so many different ways you can go about hanging these. This is just my preferred method. And if you watch some more of my videos, I have reversible signs. There's tons of different ways to do them. So I applied hot glue to the edge of this just so it didn't continue fraying. And then we're just twisting that up and it's absolute perfection. Love it. So you guys, I cheated. This is a pre-made bow from Walmart. I got it 70% off during Christmas, after Christmas, and it was just too perfect not to use. So I did get another one and I'm totally going to deconstruct it because this bow is just like epic. I love it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, fluff that out. I tried different greenery. Y'all know I usually always put greenery on my wood rounds, but for me, the simplicity of the like black and the white, and I don't know, it just, it looks so clean and fresh that I just wanted to keep it with the bow. So taking this industrial um, Velcro, I wanna be able to change my bow out. I wanna be able to change it to like a turquoise or a pink during spring. So I am going with Velcro to attach my, um, my bow. So I have tried this on, if you watched my Merry Christmas, the reversible sign that I made for my girlfriend, we chose to do Velcro so she can change out her bows when she reverses her sign. And it worked absolutely great. So all I did was apply some hot glue to that. Well, I took like, you know, the, the wrapper off and I did the same thing right here. Took the wrapper off, put a little bit of hot glue on there and then stuck it on my board. Now, you guys, I can go ahead and change this bow by season whenever I want. And this stuff is industrial. I have my mantle up with this. So here she is in all of her glory, looking absolutely gorgeous. Let me know how you like it down in the comments. And if you like, even if you're not like a wood round person, if you do like seeing these in the DIY videos, because they are so beginner friendly to make y'all, you will love making them. Hey y'all, I hope you enjoyed that first DIY, which is some of y'all's favorites, the wood rounds. So I was super excited to do one for you guys today. I hope to be doing more in some of my future DIY videos. Um, if you do want to see more of those, make sure to comment down below. And I just wanted to remind you all that I am on Instagram. We do have a Facebook like group page where we all share, you know, our different DIYs, ask questions and things like that. You can find all of that information down in my description box. The links are attached right to them. Something I also put in my description box and I get asked a lot are like what supplies I'm using or where can you get something? I 
put all of the supplies by project down below. And I also have my Amazon store link and anything that I use, maybe like if it's like Arteza or something like that from a different brand, I will always have it linked down in the description box along with hopefully the fonts that I'll be using. So always make sure to check down there. So you guys, if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe and let's get on with the next two DIYs. All right, now to these cutie patooties. Okay, so I'm taking these boxes from Dollar Tree. We took the insides out and then I'm sticking with the golden pecan stain color. You can also remember you could use like acrylic mixed with water. It also dries way faster, but surprisingly this stuff just sucked up the stain and then dried right away. So I'm doing all of the outside and then the bottom of it. It's just my preference. I like a finished product and I kept the inside, um, just the raw wood color. We're going to repeat that stuff per all three of the boxes. Then we are going to take some wood beads. I just put them in an old bowl, put some wood stain on them, kind of shook a shook a shook them around. Then I poured them out, <laughs> tap, 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 dried them up. And then once those are dry, we are going to go ahead and um, then move on to our domino pieces. And y'all, these are actually like little wood pieces. So pick them up if you see them. They are great. We're going to do a lot more DIYs with them. And I am just covering these up with Rich uh, Black by Folk Art. Now I'm taking some vinyl decals I created, and this is permanent 651 Oracle vinyl. You guys know I need my straight lines. I get all of my vinyl, like my black and my white vinyl, um, and my vinyl ease, which is my transfer tape on Amazon, and I just buy the humongous rolls of them. And then the vinyl ease is what I'm using for my transfer tape, and it is by far my favorite I've ever tried. And that is also in the Amazon store link. So we're going to go ahead and finish up putting these decals on our little domino pieces here. And then we are going to move on to attaching our little wooden beads for our feet. So I just made sure that I put these a little bit more inside the box so that they weren't poking out when it stood up. And we are going to put obvi four on each box and we are going to repeat this for all three of our boxes. So now I'm taking painter's tape and you guys know me and my straight lines. I want to make sure that each one is a straight line and that each of them line up with each other because I obviously want them standing by each other. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat this with all three of our little boxes. Isn't that so adorable? Pray, wait, trust. I love it. Now taking some floral foam from Dollar Tree, we're going to go ahead and put those in our little boxes. And then I'm taking, I'm sorry, I don't know what these flowers are called. The tags were already off them, but I just cut these down. And with two like bundles of them, I was able to put four in the middle and three on each side, but you were still able to see a little bit of that foam. So what I did was I took another bundle of Dollar Tree florals, and I don't know what these are called either. Um, I'll sh they'll come into frame like right now, any day. Um, these right here, they came out during summer and they are so beautiful and look crazy high end. So I stuffed those in there and then I took some of my scrap leaves from my stash and I tuck those in the back so that I'm covering it, but you know, like it still looks green and it looks full. So y'all, I cannot wait to show you these because they seriously, these little buggers turned out so beautiful. Look at how vibrant, like the, the like pray, wait, trust, it just pops out at you. And with those vibrant white flowers, these are just gorgeous and they would go anywhere with any decor. So let me know if you're going to be making these because y'all, I mean, all of this was Dollar Tree. All right. This one, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, Dollar Tree squeezy, not Dollar Tree because this is actually from Target. So my girl, Teresa B D I Y, she also sent me this and it is from target dollar spot. I'm going to go ahead and leave Teresa's link, um, up above and in my description box. Cause you guys will absolutely adore her and her personality. Um, so anyways, y'all, we are going to go ahead and brighten this up. So I'm just taking Waverly white 
And I'm taking my time because I don't want to get it inside of the frame or the outside. I just want to coat the outside of this window frame here. And I'm just using one of my small brushes. I have no idea where these brushes are from to tell you the truth, but we're going to go ahead and cover that up. And then we are going to move on to our, this one is so easy. Okay. So then taking this home plaque from Dollar Tree, I'm going to paint the entire base of it. And then we're going to paint the front of the home, making sure not to hit like the sides or the insides of the letters. And I wanted to do it that way so that it added dimension to the plaque. So you can see right here, I didn't, I didn't get the back of it, the sides. And do you see how much depth that adds to this little piece? I do paint the back or I don't. Okay. And then we are going to just hot glue this directly to our um, window frame here. And then we're going to get three Jenga blocks because it was a little front heavy and we're going to glue those three Jenga blocks together. Yeah. Get your parchment paper, girlfriend. And if you guys are still here with me, comment down in the comments with like a heart emoji. Yeah. I like hearts, a green one. Our red one. It could be any heart. Okay. Now taking a thumbtack, I'm going to go ahead and paint that black just so it kind of blends in. And then I also took, which I didn't show, um, these heart grapevine things from, uh, Valentine's day section. And I just spray painted that black and that's it. You guys, <laughs> that was all. And is it, I, I think that it's so adorable. It was so simple. I wish my Target dollar spot had these kinds of things, but it doesn't. Um, so you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and let me know which one was your favorite. Have a great weekend. Bye. Just pretend like you fit in it, right? <laughs> All right. Oh. Oh. Mm. Hank, get out of the sink. baby can you stop that for just a second so I can record thank you okay is that like oh is it is that my phone I don't know if I want to touch it up or if I want to go blonde. <clears throat> okay. Ever will you let Frankie in, please? Thank you. <clears throat> now I know when I'm not recording, what that's like up, down, up, down. Mama's booty's getting tired from all those stairs. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Okay. I look so glossy. Oh my gosh, this is that jelly, and it is actually jelly. 
highlighter stuff from Dollar Tree. Woo! Okay. Good job, folks. How about do we do to the E to the E? <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, all right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed that wood round DIY. I, no. <clears throat> okay. Can you go lay down, please, and stop bothering me? No, you don't need on my lap. Okay. 